Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 115. Written by Pepper Antique. Just hold still. James said, focusing on the magic coursing through his hands. Seriously. This isn't necessary, James. Amina said, struggling to pull her arm from his grip. Just hold still, damn it. I can do this. He said, voice showing signs of stress. It's just a scratch. She said, for what had to be the third or fourth time now. That's why I have to do this. He replied, struggling to hold onto her wrist. I need to learn on small stuff so that I'll know what to focus on when bigger injuries happen. He focused more energy into the healing spell that Velary had been helping him learn. He'd already read the entire book on healing magic. But for some reason he just couldn't get it to work. He was focusing on everything it had told him to focus on. He wasn't even thinking of any of the medical knowledge he had from Earth. Why wasn't this working? He couldn't see it, but his eyes were emitting a bright blue light. Still the scratch on Amina's arm lingered, not fading in the slightest. Come on. He said to himself. He focused more energy. Come on. James. Amina said softly so that only he could hear it. James looked up at her, eyes still glowing. She placed a hand on his shoulder. The light began to fade as he relaxed. He let her wrist go as the light faded out of his eyes and hands. Damn it! He said. She placed her other hand on top of his hands. It's all right. She said. He looked at her. Then she grinned and said. Now watch someone who actually know how to do it. Her hands glowed the amber color of healing magic. James watched with annoyance as the skin underneath quickly knit back into place and sealed itself, leaving the barest hint of a scar. See? You do it just like that. She said with a chuckle. That's not funny. He replied as she skipped away, back to her side of the area they were using to train. I need to learn this stuff. He yelled at her. She grinned as she put her new helmet back on and picked her sword up off the ground. You've just managed to actually hit me in training for the first time ever. She said. A big day for you darling. And yet, you're focused on not being able to cast healing magic yet. She waved a gauntleted finger at him. Priorities. This is sword training, not magic class. She raised her training shield in front of her and lifted her sword. Now back to it. That's still not funny. James remarked as he grabbed his sword off of the ground and rushed at her. Keela and Artair both looked at each other. Keela shrugged. Artair rolled his eyes. I'm going to go catch us some dinner. He said as he stood up to leave. Before I lose my appetite. When they finally arrived at Baytun, after almost a month and a half of slogging through the snow, the first thing James did was head towards Antonia's cafe. Amina, Keela, and Vilairi were more than happy to follow him, though the three of them had to convince Artair to tag along. Antonia was much the same as the last time James had seen him. The surly elf greeted him with a warm smile and a hug. He looked at Amina curiously before seeming to recognize her from her last visit. Amina explained the necessity of the previous trip's secrecy. But Antonia understood, news of the Grinner's attempt had already reached far and wide well before then. Antonia joined them for dinner, serving them some of the clam chowder personally before sitting down and joining in on the conversation. He told great stories from his travels before becoming a cook, as well as funny kitchen stories. James confirmed the news of the elemental, though he spoke quietly. The cafe was busy. Travelers on the road, and residents of the village seemed to flow through the small restaurant at a constant flow. Some sitting and eating, others grabbing baskets with their orders and heading out immediately. James was happy to see more than a few bowls of the chowder being eaten greedily by the customers. Then, when dinner was done, James followed the elf back into the kitchen to show him the recipe he'd promised during their last visit. Amina followed him closely, wanting to see the new food for herself. Keela and Vilairi weren't far behind, but stayed on the other side of the serving line to stay out of the way. Artair used the opportunity to escape back to the inn. James asked the chef if he'd had the local fishers find some of the creatures he'd been looking for. 
Antonia confirmed that he had, though he admitted some disgust at the weird-looking things. James looked at them. They were shrimp, of a sort. They had an extra eye, placed right in the middle of their heads between the other two. Their tails were longer and had more of a curve to them, instead of simply folding inward they actually seemed to spiral. But they were definitely some kind of shrimp. James grabbed some salt, butter and garlic and prepped the shrimp-like creatures the way he would normal shrimp. He'd made shrimp plenty of times back home, so the recipe came simply to him, though shelling the spiraled creatures proved a bit of a trick at first. Then he used a needle to gut them. Then threw them into the hot garlic butter. He only cooked a handful of them, enough for each of them to try one. Then when they were on the plate he grabbed a smeply, mostly out of curiosity, and squeezed some of its juices onto one of them. He quickly popped the spiral shrimp into his mouth and chewed. It was everything he'd expected it to be. The soft buttery shrimp flavor was spot on for back on earth. The smeply juice was almost an exaggeration of the lime he might have used, and the few drops of juice mixed with the salt already on the shrimp was delicious. He gestured for the others to follow suit. The results were exactly what he'd wanted. Amina and Antonia followed suit with the smeply juice, Keela and Vilairi ate them plain. But they all savored the delectable shrimp flavor. These little lake bugs taste that good? Antonia asked. I guess they do. James replied as he finished the last little bite. So, fresh water clams meant fresh water shrimp after all. Even if they're a bit weird looking. I can't wait to begin cooking these. Antonia said, already trying to copy James's preparation of the creatures. Well, that's all well and good. James said. But that's not the recipe I wanted to show you. That was just a test to make sure that shrimp were actually a thing. Oh. Antonia mused, hands already holding several of the creatures. No. James said simply. I'm gonna teach you about something called paella. Vickers loved flying. Tom had proven to be everything he'd hoped the griffin would be. The mythical creature carried Vickers into the sky as easily as Vickers would wear a backpack while out on a jog. Even with the saddle and all of the operatives weight Tom could fly fast and maneuver tightly. And now he was delivering Vickers' mission to him on a silver platter. Several days earlier, and at the last town that he and his merchant friend had stopped at, Vickers had settled up with the rowdy older man. His employer had been somewhat reluctant to see him go. Vickers had already proven himself a great bodyguard, and had also made the both of them a large sum of unexpected money from his looted goods. But the merchant had always known that Vickers' primary objective was getting to the capital. And it was no secret that the muscular agent had been champing at the bit to get in the air and get on his way ever since he'd gotten Tom to fly with him. So he'd seen it coming. The two of them settled their affairs. Vickers had let the merchant have the last of the looted goods in exchange for ending their unwritten contract and a small sum of gold for the road. The merchant agreed, wished him luck, and told him to contact him if he ever needed work again. Then the two of them shook hands and Vickers had shouldered his bag and headed out. And now as Vickers flew through the night air, the chill biting at his cheeks even under his scarf, he could see the night lights of the capital city. Here I come. He thought as he took Tom into a dive. 